and welcome. Anyone who's been to Merchant City Yoga on a Sunday knows how much I love catching up with everyone over a cup of my freshly brewed spiced chai. These Sunday chai sessions really bring everyone together. A true celebration of friendship, community and connection. I want to try and capture some of that magic and share it with you at home. So I've invited some familiar faces from our MCY family to chat with me over a cuppa. I'm affectionately calling them the chai sessions. Pop the kettle on, get yourself comfy and come and join us. Hey Laura, thanks so much for joining me for my chai. So I hope you've got a cuppa because I'm just reaching down looking, I've got one yeah, right here. here. <laughs> got my wee cup of tea. Um, thank you so much for joining for a bit of a chat about yoga for children. And just before we get into that, I thought it might be quite nice to introduce you to everyone. Um, so they know a little bit about you and a little bit about your background. So for everyone who hasn't met Laura yet, uh, Laura is a qualified um, child development officer and has worked in the education sector in the early years education sector for many years here in Glasgow. And she's also one of our yoga teacher training graduates, our CYS Glasgow yoga teacher training graduates. And I'm really delighted that Laura is bringing all of her um, knowledge and experience in both of those fields together to offer a very special workshop um, to help yoga teachers teach yoga to children. So Laura, very warm welcome. And Thank I thought you. I thought we'd start by maybe uh, talking about how you actually got yourself into yoga. Um, how did you first discover this thing, yoga? Um, so I think like a lot of people, I was in a gym and I went to my first yoga class. I think it was living down in London at the time. And I just found something quite magical about it, quite calming about it. At the beginning, I did use it as a form of exercise, but I started to recognise the other benefits of it, about how it made me feel, how it made me feel calm. And I think I started using it more for those benefits than opposed to being an exercise. I also worked at the time um, within the airline industry. Um, so I was away from home a lot. And the beauty about yoga is that I could take my mat with me and I could practice anywhere in the world. I was, I could practice in my room. Um, also had the beauty of being able to practice, you know, outdoors early in the morning. And I just, I just loved it. It just, it just made me feel so much better mentally as well as physically. Um, and then I didn't really think about going into teaching until it was kind of played in the back of my mind for a while. And then I think it was more like during the COVID times that I was practicing more and seeing the benefits. And that's when I set the, the child course as well. And that's when I contacted you. I think it was just before actually COVID hit that I came mm -hmm. in to see Yeah, you. I think it was. I think it was yeah. like the, before we went into lockdown, um, I came in to chat to yourself. And I think Anna was there and there was you were um, working with students at the time. And, you know, it yeah, totally those, those heady pre-lockdown days. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I came in and I had lunch with everybody. I think my lunch sold it for me as well. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. Um, and yeah, I made my decision then that I was going to sign up um, with Merchants at Yoga and, you know, sign up for the course, which I did. And, you know, it's been one of the best things I've done um, for uh, going forward in teaching, but it was kind of life changing as well, the the, the other aspects of it um, for me. Yeah, can you maybe tell us a little bit more about how, because obviously, like, you were one of the the groups that, that we had a particularly challenging time um, yeah. continuing with the teacher training, given everything that was going on. So, um, you know, the, the groups that we had through lockdown, I feel it wasn't just the yoga that was challenging them and, um, you know, the questions we were asking and the questions we were asking of themselves, but actually, like, we had much bigger challenges to consider as well so maybe you could share a little bit more about 
um, some yeah. of the challenges and maybe what you got out of, of that. Yep. Yeah. so I, I sat with, when I signed up for the course, it was all going ahead in person. Then obviously we got hit, I think, with the second lockdown and that was when it happened. Um, I also took COVID pretty bad as well and got diagnosed with long COVID. Um, and I actually had to make the decision to hit pause and come back the following year, which was really, really tough. But yeah, sometimes stepping back is the yeah. hardest decision, isn't it? Yeah, but all those things, and you really helped me through it with, you know, listen to your body, do what's right for you, because I was trying to push myself and it wasn't achievable. I was homeschooling as well, like a lot of people were. I've got two kids at home and I just yeah. wasn't. It didn't feel as if I was giving it a hundred percent. It didn't feel great either, but that mental side of it made me look more into the philosophy of yoga and more into that side of it, of it as opposed to you know all the physical practice of it. Which looking back now was actually a blessing because it made me focus on the other parts of it, which have really helped me with my career moving forward and with decisions that I've had to come up against so yeah I hit pause on it I think it got to about the January and I ended up coming back the following August um, yeah. and we were in person again we were in person um, for the, the whole year and it was great I absolutely loved my time um, with you and everybody that was on the course with me I made a lot of friends from the first part of the course the first six months and then you know Going forward into the second part, I met a lot of really lovely people that I've still kept in touch with to this day. Yeah, well, you got the best of both worlds, three days. Yeah. You got <laughs> two groups to yeah. stay in touch with. Yeah, and I think what that's think? the thing. It was like I felt, oh, I really let myself down and everybody else. But now looking back, I've actually benefited from, you know, having a, a bit extra training and, you know, looking at the other sides of the the yoga practice, not just the physical yeah. element, which I've I was too focused on, I think, at the beginning. Yeah, and, and that's easy to do, and, and we all we all do that. And you know, I was actually just having a conversation the other day with somebody about how hard it, it's easy just to push on and push through, but actually sometimes it's the harder decision to step back, to not yeah. do something that you really want to and that you're committed to and everything. Because we are, we do kind of feel, don't we, that it's somehow a lack of commitment or a lack of drive or there, there's something that um it's almost like an admission of failure um, yeah but if it's the right thing if it's a good decision for you then it works better in the long you know if we can take take a step back and look at the bigger picture yeah um, you know it works much better for us so maybe i can ask why you believe it's so important for children to be taught yoga for children to practice yoga um i just obviously i've worked with a lot of children um and i worked through covid as well with a lot of vulnerable children when i taught all throughout um with those children while i was still working during covid and the benefits it, it brought and the the stories that came out of it were just you know really heartwarming as well um, it just, we worked in really, really small groups. Obviously, I was working with the early years, so the concentration isn't there as much. But they really, really took to it. They took to the breathing. They absolutely loved it and got so much out of it. And it's it also, it kind of helps them self-regulate as well with behaviours, um, you know, being able to, you know, just sit back and think about actions, think about what they're doing. Also, the fun element of it, um, you know, being with their friends um, and learning something new, learning something like the whole breathing as well, like stop, have a breath. I mean, how many times do we say that to people? Right, okay, stop, breathe. Um, you know, with children, it just gave them something to slow down a wee bit. It's okay not to be competitive a lot of the the things that we teach for children are always to be the winner and be the best and this was good for kids that weren't as competitive you know don't get me wrong it's good for all kids but for people that the kids that were a bit shyer and maybe didn't want to be 
winning all the time or weren't as confident or didn't want to volunteer for things it, it's so good it's so good for them yeah and what sort of mental and physical benefits did you see in the children that you worked with um you were getting kids that maybe didn't share before or kids that didn't really like kids that were maybe overshadowed by quieter kids that were overshadowed by louder kids where confidence was building they were starting to speak they were starting to join in and um, they were becoming you could see their you know they're coming out in themselves their personalities forming their confidence increasing it was just lovely to watch so one of the things that I love about your approach is that you're not teaching teachers games to play with the children you are teaching yoga to children so how do you go about you know you're, you're talking about a uh, some of the the challenges there of, of working with for example the early years where their concentration um isn't as developed as, as some of the older kids like how do you go about making yoga engaging and fun for the children very much um it can be you can go in with the biggest plan in the world of what you're going to do that day and it can change dramatically because it's got to be engaging for the, the children. So sometimes it's very much, it can change on how they're feeling that day and what their interest, what their interest is. So it's quite child-led. Um, so I think it's always to have that in the back of your mind. You don't, you can't make people do things that they don't want to do. If they've been off, you know, doing something else, they've maybe been working on another activity and they still want to take that forward and um, they're not ready to stop on that. You can incorporate that into the yoga as well. Um, there is an element of games involved, but again, it's more working with each other and um, not anything competitive. It can be things to do with breath work, um, you know, kindness, working in partners. Um, so you can incorporate a lot into it and incorporating at such a young age as well, incorporating things like counting as well, which is really, really important, especially in Glasgow, we're trying to get the attainment level um, with numeracy up. So, you know, the simple things like counting the breath, which we're used to in as adults with Ashtanga, with the counting of the breath, it can really be incorporated in with the kids and getting them to start counting, but also getting them to start you know, breathing along with it, which is like, you know, a double bonus. It's getting them to count, but it's also getting them to think about the breath and self-regulation as well. Uh -huh. And it's just, it's those simple things, isn't it, that are so effective. Yeah. So how do you adapt your teaching approach to try and take into account, um, you know, children with different personalities maybe different abilities um, or even different needs from some of the other kids so i think treating treating them like individuals you know giving everybody the opportunity to have a voice and be heard as well to, despite what their needs are you might get kids that don't want to join in at the beginning and that's that's fine if they want to sit and they want to observe let them. There's, there shouldn't be any pressure for someone to have to do a certain thing and have to perform if they want to just maybe sit and observe. There's no harm in that, you know, just letting everybody be individuals and treating everybody individually and treating everybody respectfully as well, not having a uniformed approach to what we think should be done and that, some, that we should be doing a certain thing at a certain time. And you get more out people the confidence starts to build as well when i mean i had two little boys that were twins and the very very different personalities one wanted to please and one wanted to join in straight away whereas the brother wanted to watch and he watched for quite a, a number of weeks and then eventually one day just started joining in and really really enjoyed it but even though he wasn't joining in at the beginning when you were asking for volunteers to come, he was the first person to put his hand up to come. So just sometimes just by watching what's going on, they're benefiting as well. Yeah, and you know, as 
teachers going into teach groups of children like that, it actually takes a bit of confidence as a teacher as well, doesn't it? To give the children some space and to let them do their thing rather than following our plan. You know, it yeah. can take a little bit of confidence as a teacher. Yeah, and I think that's what I learned from you as well because it, during when I did eventually join, we were in person, I had a pretty bad back injury, as you know, and I had to, again, sit and observe. And at the beginning, I was thinking, oh, God, I felt like everybody's doing this and I'm just watching. But by actually just sitting back and watching, it really benefited me as well because I got to see, I got to observe lots of different lovely styles of yoga. I got to watch people's movements and realise that everybody's not the same. Everybody's different. Everybody does things differently. So it's just the exact same for a child. And it, it probably helps build your confidence because you're thinking, I think when you're doing yoga sometimes, especially Ashtanga, you're thinking, oh, you know, I need to do this there better than me. But when you actually sit down and you watch, not everybody's perfect and everybody's got their own ways and their own adaptations to things as well. And it makes you realise that you're not any different after all. Yeah. Yeah. We're all special and none of us are special all at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> um, so what can people expect from your workshop? What are, you know, in your mind, what are your main goals? What is it that, that you want to achieve? What do you want people to, to get out of your workshop? You know, so um, exploring the different ages and stages, um, the different adaptations that can be made to that. Um, and also, you know, not just me doing all the talking, um, people being able to demonstrate as well and come up with their own ideas, starting to get people to, you know, think about ideas that they may have, because probably a lot of people have got experience with children they might not but you know giving kind of giving you hints and tips and tools to then come up with your own ideas and not just following a one fit you know one size fits all some people are really like there's a whole thing about yoga stories and singing and that's great but you have to be comfortable with it so what whatever you're comfortable with and what you can bring to the table as well can absolutely weave in um, with, you know, the things that I'm going to talk about and things that I'm going to demonstrate as well. And as well as, as giving, hopefully giving people some confidence to go out and start to, to share yoga with children, um, what kind of keys and skills or techniques um, are you thinking that you would like people to to leave the workshop with? Um, absolutely leaving with the confidence and the knowledge of like how to approach, um, you know, setting up, maybe approaching schools, nurseries, after school clubs, um, and being able to put classes together and also being able to, you know, do that thing that we spoke about where things might change. So, you know, having, having, ideas having the confidence of if things change on the day you know not to freak out um yeah. that there's ways to work around it um also bits on you know like safeguarding of children vulnerable children talking about all these things as well that are going to benefit benefit yeah. So, your yeah so i mean those those topics they span the different age groups don't they yeah uh, you're going to be introducing um, to everyone. Yep, so what to do in, if these kinds of situations arise, giving people examples, um, you know, and sharing what you would do and what you think you would do. Um, and as you say, for different ages and different stages, different techniques, um, ideas, what you can do to, to make it fun, how to plan a class as well, if you were going out on your own what sort of things to plan um into your class as well yeah I mean I think we are being very ambitious Laura and how much we are trying to pack in to this one workshop and hopefully um, it'll all work out you know if there was one thing that 
you could give people to take away just now, um, like one practice or tip that you could give to people who want to work with children just now to take away, what would it be? I think just to believe in your abilities, like everyone that's coming will either have their own practice or, you know, maybe be yoga teachers already. So you have all those, I'm, you know, I'm not going to touch people, teach people out so kids. You know how to, you know about yoga. So just having the confidence and having the ability to take it forward and, you know, spread the word um, that yoga is not just beneficial for adults, it's really beneficial for children and that children the earlier on, they're like sponges. So if they're adapting this mindset earlier on, it's going to absolutely benefit them as they go through life. Well, I think that's a brilliant place to stop for us, like on that yeah. note. Um, like you say, if, if we can give the kids and all the challenges they're facing in schools just now, some tools, some reprieve some confidence it can only be a good thing because yeah. it seems that yeah the the challenges in schools just now that kids are facing they yeah, just seem to be mounting up don't they yeah yeah so it's you know having those tools and using them all through life um absolutely great a great a great thing for them to have and to share with others as well Great, Laura. Thank you so much. Thank you. This very special introduction to teaching yoga to children workshop with Laura will take place on Saturday, the 11th of November 2023. And it runs from 9.30 till 4pm. And during the day, Laura will cover key topics important to teaching yoga for early years, primary children and teens. And in her workshop, she's going to blend education, practical insight, and of course, because it's here at MCY, loads of fun too. If you'd like to join Laura, you can book directly from the workshops page of the website at merchantcityyoga.com. Thank you.